Okay, so hold on to your hats. We're going to test out all of the cases. Here comes case one. Now remember, I've got um, this domain here, x is less than zero for this domain over here, but it's in our interest to select a particular value within those domains um, that's easy for me to substitute, right? So in this domain, I'm going to choose x equals negative three. Uh, I'll just say consider that because it's in this domain. And what I do is I take that x value and I need a y value that goes with it. So I'm going to substitute x equals negative three into this equation here. So that gives me um, a third times negative three. This is why I chose the value because it's gonna cancel my denominator. That's negative one uh, minus one negative one minus one equals negative two. So for this particular value of x and y, I get z equals minus three minus two i. So to test this, what I have to do is go back to the original equation and I'm gonna use this a fair bit, so I might as well uh, duplicate this down below. So we'll tuck it in this corner over here. That'll do, I can still see that. All right, so I'm going to try the left-hand side first and then I will test the right-hand side and see if I get something equivalent. All right, so I've got arg of z, but the z I'm testing out here is minus three minus two i, so I'm gonna write arg of minus three minus two i plus i. Okay, what am I getting out of this? You can see I can, um, I can collect some like terms, those imaginary terms are going to combine together, so I get minus three minus i. Now I don't know what that angle is off the top of my head. Uh, it's not an exact value, it's, where is it? It's in the third quadrant, okay? But what I can do is I can have a look at the right hand side and I can see if I end up getting a similar or indeed an equal argument. Let's, let's give it a go. I want argument of z, which we said was minus three minus two i, but you can see I'm gonna be not adding i, I'm gonna be subtracting three. So um, that gives me this, minus three. Um, and when I simplify on the right hand side, you can see it's the real terms that are going to do a bit of collecting in here. So I get minus six minus two i. Hmm, now well, what does this mean? Well, we need to think about this geometrically a little bit. We did go about this um, algebraic approach to try and as avoid as much uh, geometry as we could, but you can never get away from it because complex numbers are inherently two dimensional objects that exist on the complex plane. Where are these two complex numbers? Uh, minus three minus i and minus six minus two i. Well, let's just do a very, very rough plot. They're both over here in the third quadrant. If I go uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, those are some rough markers there, that'll do. And then I go minus one, minus two. All right, so where is minus three minus i? Well, I'm gonna position it about here. You can see that, uh, let's do it this way. You can see that it lines up with minus three, it lines up with minus i, so that is the first of my uh, complex numbers. And then I also have uh, minus six minus two i, which I'm positioning around here, right? So you can see there's minus six over that way, and then minus two i down at the bottom. Now, what is the argument for each of these, right? Well, we're working out the angle faced from the positive real axis, and then I rotate around if I want the principal argument anyway. But you can see that these are not uh, random points, right? Minus three minus i and minus six minus two i, they exist on this same interval. It's just that this one here is twice as far away. That's because I can write minus six minus two i as two lots of minus three minus i. And because multiplying a complex number by a real number, all it does is it changes its scale. It doesn't, um, it doesn't rotate it around in any way. You've got to multiply by something imaginary or something complex to do that. Um, something with an imaginary component that's not zero. Because you're multiplying through by two, you're just extending it further away and not changing its direction. So therefore, its argument is the same as that of minus three minus i. Now again, I don't know what that angle is. Um, I don't know what the size of that rotation will be, but I can say that it's the same as the left-hand side. So therefore, tick this case, um, x is less than zero, uh, which is, just going back to my number line over here, this part here, this part works, so I can say at least I've made some progress. Let's go to case two. So I need to test between, uh, let's see here, between uh, zero and three. This is not quite so easy because I can't put in zero, I can't put in three, which would have been nice values to test. I've got to pick something else. So let's just go with one, that should do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, um, this is between zero and three. I'm going to consider 
x equals one. So if x equals one, then the y value that goes with that is um, a third minus one. Last I checked, that's negative two thirds. So therefore, the complex number I get with this is one minus two thirds i. All right, so now I have to test this thing out. So what's my left-hand side going to be? Well, my left-hand side is equal to arg of my complex number, one minus two thirds i, and then I'm adding i. Hmm, okay, so this is arg of um, one, now minus two thirds i plus i, that's going to be plus a third i. Okay, so far so good. I, again, just like I did before, I don't know what that angle is, um, but I don't need to know exactly what its value is, I just need to compare it with the right hand side. So um, here I've got arg of same complex number, one minus two thirds i, and then um, I need to, just reviewing, I need to subtract three. So let's do that. Minus three. So my real components are going to cancel a little bit. I get negative two minus two thirds i. And at this point you're like, wait a second. This, this, is, this is a problem, right? This angle, uh, this complex number here is in the first quadrant and this complex number here is in the third quadrant. I don't know where these numbers are or what their angles are, their arguments are, but they can't possibly be the same because they're in completely different quadrants. So therefore, this cannot possibly equal the left-hand side. So this is a dud, right? This is how we algebraically confirm that, oh, okay, um, this, this particular equation here um, is what we must satisfy, but numbers in this range, like x equals one, you can test any other number in this range, you'll get the same result. Um, they don't work, right? So you're gonna have to um, say that's not part of your domain. Now, uh, you can't just like dust your hands off and say, oh, I'm finished now, I'm tired of this algebra, right? If you're committed to the algebraic method, you've gotta go all the way through. So we've done two cases, we need to do the third. Case three. This is for x is greater than three. So again, we are choosing a value of x that's just gonna be convenient to us. I want multiples of three because they will just cancel with my fractions here. So I'm gonna choose six. If x equals six, then y is equal to a third of six, which is two, take away uh, two, take away one, which is one. So that's not too bad. Um, therefore, the z that I get with that is just six plus i, so let's Test it out once more with feeling. The left hand side is going to be equal to arg of my complex number, which is 6 plus i, and then I'm going to add i. So I'm getting the argument of 6 plus 2i. Check the right hand side. Um, that's going to be the argument of, again, my number, 6 plus i, and I'm subtracting 3. I've done it, I've tested so many times, I know this off the top of my heart, uh, top of my head. So I can say, arg of six take away three is three plus i, but I can employ the same trick that I did um, in the first question just in reverse, right? Um, this argument here, if I uh, multiply this by a real number, the argument doesn't change. So therefore, the argument of three plus i is the same as the argument of two times three plus i, which is indeed what you have on the left hand side. So this is also true. So at last, I can now say, therefore, um, the Cartesian equation, that's what I was after in the first place. The Cartesian equation, um, I worked out there was this straight line very early on, but I need to work out which part of the straight line it was. So it's going to be not just y equals a third x minus one, but now I can supply the domain that goes with it, which is x is less than zero, or x is greater than three because we tested out the in-between domain, this between naught and three, and we found it was a dud, it, it didn't work, right? And if you want to do this in interval notation, because you're a fan of it, um, we can say from a negative infinity, remember you're not including infinity, so that's why it's not a square bracket. Uh, you go up to zero, not including zero either, uh, the word or, it's equivalent to, in certain notation, the, the union symbol, as opposed to the upside down one, the intersection. Um, and then I'm going from three also up to infinity. That's the domain that it works for. So, take a deep breath. Uh, what can we uh, conclude from this? Well, if you have a look at the question from the beginning, it is obviously much more efficient and elegant to be able to know, oh, this is um, a pair of opposing rays, and I just have to exclude the interval between the two relevant reference points. Way faster, way more elegant, right? 
But if you don't know that, if you don't know, oh, this is the kind of shape that I'm after, it can be a little, it, it can feel like, if you're watching someone else do this, it can feel like they waved a magic wand to arrive at this solution. So this is the way you would have to go about it if you wanted to do it from scratch using algebra. I hope that the length of this solution convinces you that if you have a choice between doing it by geometric reasoning and just bashing out the algebra, do not bash out the algebra because it just takes such a very long time and it is error prone, um, as I've demonstrated many times. Um, but just to satisfy you, you know, this is how it comes about. And you can also see why um, we exclude that in the middle interval um, on algebraic terms, not just on geometric terms.